Abbott and Costello program, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, brought to you by Camel, the cigarette of costlier, properly aged tobaccos. The Abbott and Costello program, with the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, chubby little cherub, who, when caught putting a ladder against the roof, because he heard his Uncle Artie Stebbins say he was going to have one on the house, calmly said... I'm a bad boy! (laughs) Costello, Costello, what are you doing... What are you doing dressed up like Napoleon Bonaparte? Well, you see, every Universal Studios are going to make a picture called Napoleon and Josephine. Yes. And I'm going to play Napoleon. There's only one thing that stands in my way. What's that? Charles Boyer. Uh, (laughs) Costello, are you classing yourself with Charles Boyer? What's Boyer got that I haven't got five times as much as? You've certainly got a lot of nerve, Costello, comparing yourself with Charles Boyer. Yeah. Do you realize that he won an Oscar for his performance in Gaslight? I was in that picture. Uh, wait a minute. I saw Gaslight. I didn't see you in it. I turned on the gas. I... <laughs> Never mind that. How can you compare yourself with Boyer? He, he's got charm. I got charm. Ah, he dresses like a fashion plate. I can dress like a fashion plate. And Boyer has sex appeal. I can dress like a fashion plate. <laughs> I should have quit when I was even. <laughs> but Costello tells me he can make women swoon mm. by just lowering his eyelids. They call him uh, droopy eyes. It's the same thing with me. Women call you droopy eyes? No, saggy britches. Sa- <laughs> Costello, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The picture Napoleon and Josephine calls for a great lover. Uh, for instance, like me. Like you? Uh, certainly. Why, women all fall all over me. Women fall all over you? All over the me. The dames you go out with are too old to stand up. Oh, my yeah. <laughs> Be serious. Be serious, Costello. Why, in my day as a dramatic actor, hmm. women threw flowers at my feet. They threw jewelry at my feet. They even threw themselves at my feet. Ah, what has your feet got that you haven't got? Huh? <laughs> I bet you. Will you cut that out, please? The role of Napoleon calls for an experienced actor. Oh, that's me, Abbott. When I was three years old, I used to put on plays in our garage, and I charged two pins a mission. And when the show was over, I'd give the pins back. Give the pins back? What for? So the audience wouldn't lose their rumpers on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> but, Costello, please, I know. I know you're a little teeny weeny But, Costello, please listen to me. In order to play the part of Napoleon, you have to have an education. Now, where did you get your education? At the corner of Hollywood and Vine. I... You can't... No, 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 no. You can't learn anything at the corner of Hollywood and Vine. You can on a windy day. Costello, please. Go take that Napoleon costume off and forget it. You don't even look like Napoleon. Oh, yes, I do, Abbott. Look, I got my hair all slicked down and shiny. What kind of oil is that you've got on your hair? It's a new kind of oil. I got it out of a little tin can. There's only one thing wrong with it. What's that? I don't know what to do with all those little sardines. <laughs> oh, wash that sardine oil off your hair. You, you have a bunch of cats following you. Oh, I don't mind cats. I even know a woman who lives with cats. Who? Mrs. Cats. Cat- <laughs> Hello, that's a no joke. Ah, Mr. Cats is an old man. I should have quit when I was even. Now, look, I refuse to discuss this any longer, Costello. Napoleon was a romantic figure. Yeah. He had a lot of women in his life. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been out with the opposite sex? No, but it wasn't my fault. It wasn't your fault? No, my mother wouldn't tell me which was the opposite sex. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Will you please talk sense, Costello? I'm just... <laughs> listen to me, please. I'm just going to see how you would play a love scene with a girl. Now, let's pretend that I'm the first girl you ever met in your life. I just... sure start out with a dog, don't I? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Forget how I look. Just, just say to yourself that I'm a beautiful girl. <laughs> well, come I on. I couldn't be that sort, sort of... All no, right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, those Dr. Cowans get you, don't Oh, they, they certainly do. <laughs> well, just remember that old adage, beauty is only skin deep. Well, go out and skin yourself and come back in. There you go, Costell. I try to help you and you haven't got the intelligence to appreciate it. You haven't got the brain of a two-year-old child. Yeah, but look at the difference in our ages. All right, all right. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you one more chance. Now, I'm your girlfriend, Gladys. I'm sitting in the parlor by the fire reading a book. What are you reading? Uh, Forever Amber. What do you, 
you want with a fire? <laughs> yes, never mind, please. I'm sitting there waiting for you to knock on the front door. Well, here I am, darling. Wait a minute. You didn't knock on the front door. I sneaked in the back door. I used to be a nice man. I, look, wait. Well, all right. Now, now you're in. Now, uh, sit, here, uh, sit down here. Sit down here by me on the sofa. Now, okay. Don't, don't sit way over there. Move closer. I, I'm your girlfriend, remember? Mm-hmm. Move closer. How's this? Oh, no, 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 no. A little closer. Uh, closer. Closer. Costello. How do you like that? I went right past her. <laughs> I told you you didn't know how to make love to a girl, didn't I? I'll have to show you how to make love. Now, you be the girl, and I'll come to call on you. Uh, what kind of a girl am I? Am I pretty? Oh, what difference does it make? I don't care if you're cross-eyed and bow-legged as long as you're a girl. Oh, you men are all alike. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, Costello. You're a 23-year-old girl. And you're, you're lying on the floor playing with your dogs. How do you like that? A girl, 23 years old, playing with her feet. Look, <laughs> Costello, please, I'll show you how to make love to a girl. Remember, you're the girl now, and, and I'm coming to call on you. Now, here I come. Well, Costello, why don't you answer the door? I'm just showing you I'm hard to get. <laughs> I'm not going to open it up the Never first mind, time. Never mind, I'm coming. I'm coming in anyway. What are you screaming for? I'm taking a bath, you. You're, you're taking a bath? You're taking a bath? Yes, I just finished my dinner. What's finishing your dinner got to do with you being in the bathtub? I'm taking a bath and washing the dishes at the same time. I give up, I'm through. Oh, no, Abbott, don't give up. Please give me another chance. Oh, uh, all right. Now, here I come again to call on you. Now, I told you that I was going to teach you how to make love to, uh, to a girl. This time, I'm going through with it. Now, come into my arms. No, Abbott, no. Costello. I won't, no. Stop pushing me. Do you hear? <laughs> oh, Costello, you fool. Why did you push me out of the window? I had to, Abbott. I thought I heard my husband coming. <laughs> Pick up any medical directory, leaf through its pages, stop almost anywhere, and there you will find the names of doctors covered in the recent nationwide survey made by three leading independent research organizations. They cover doctors in every field of medicine and in every state of the union. Big cities, small towns, hospitals, clinics, laboratories. 113,000 doctors. The gist of their query was, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? The brand most named was Camel's. Rich? Full-flavored, cool, mild camels. The cigarette made of a superior blend of costlier tobaccos. If you are a camel smoker now, this preference won't surprise you. If you're not, try camels on your own tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat, the true proving ground for a cigarette. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. And here's Carl Hoff and the Camel Orchestra with a great new arrangement, You've Got Me Crying Again. Is, uh, is too stubby. That's easy, Abbott. They taped up my nose. They taped up your nose? Yeah. How did you smell? Not bad. Right. <laughs> hey, you know I'm a sensitive to the part of Napoleon? 
Hello, Lou Costello speaking. Just a moment, Mr. Costello. The president of Universal wants to speak to you. I told you, Abbott, this is it. Here's your party, Mr. Bloomberg. Hello, Costello. Yes, Mr. Bloomberg? Costello, you were out here this morning testing for the part of Napoleon. Yes, I was. Well, I want you to get out here to the studio right away. For the part? No, you left your hat here. (laughs) (laughs) How do you like that, Abbott? They turned me down. They can't do that to me. The great Shakespearean actor... Why, I played Romeo and Juliet all last year at the Hippodrome Theater in New York. Oh, you dope. The Hippodrome Theater has been closed for five years. It has? No wonder I didn't get any applause. (laughs) Abbott, lots of my fans would like to see me play Napoleon. Oh, why don't you stop this, Costello? I'll prove it to you, Abbott. Let's go out and take a poll from door to door. Come on. Hey, let's stop at this house. My old girlfriend, Tessie Tinfoil. She lives here. Tessie, Tessie, you don't look so good today. I don't feel so good. I bought eight bottles of leg makeup, and I'm having a terrible time. What seems to be the trouble? How many bottles do you have to drink before the stuff goes to your legs? (laughs) Look, Tessie, I'm making a house-to-house poll. How would you like to see me on a screen as Napoleon? Oh, I think you'd be marvelous, lover boy. <laughs> Maybe I could play your leading lady, Josephine. No, I'm afraid not, Tessie. In the first place, you're too fat. And to come to think of it, you're too fat in the second place, too. <laughs> well, don't, don't be discouraged, Costello. Hey, Mr. Costello, will you give me your autograph? Why, certainly, little boy. Here. Hey, Ma, I win the lollipop. I told you that jerk could ride. Come here, Costello Get away from that kid Down here Let's try this next door Um, (laughs) You're all right, ain't you? I'm Lou Costello How would you like to see me on the screen as Napoleon? Oh, that would be dandy You're my favorite star, Mr. Costello I think you're the finest actor in pictures I think you're the funniest man on the radio Thank you I have an autographed picture of you that I would like to hang up in my room, but I can't. Why can't you hang it up? Well, I can't find a nail long enough to go through the padding on my cell. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they are, Costello, you see. Wise guy, do you realize that the only people who love you are dumbbells? Thank you, Abbott. How do you think you can? Here, here, careful. Pardon me, Mr. Costello, could I have your autograph? I just gave you my autograph a few minutes ago. I know, but you wrote it on the same page with Charles Lawton. So what? His autograph held its nose and kicked yours off the page. Get out of here, get out of here! Get out of here! Costello, leave that kid alone! Get out of here! leave him alone? Who's writing for you? Now, wait a minute, just a minute. <laughs> now, <Marie Mark. laughs> leave those children alone. Hey, look, Costello, here comes your old friend, Scotty Brown. Uh, hoot run, laddies. Scotty, what, what have you got under your arm? Well, it's a book of ghost stories. Uh, my wife just had a new baby. Uh, what has ghost stories got to do with a new baby? Well, I read my wife the ghost stories, and her teeth chatter so loud, I don't need a rattle for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> look, Scotty, how would you like to see me on a screen as Napoleon? I uh, would not be interested, laddie. I do not go to theaters anymore. Why not, Scotty? Well, I used to live 12 blocks from a theater, but now we've moved two blocks further away. Well, what's, what's that got to do with it? Well, I don't finish dinner until five minutes to six, and now, no matter how fast I run, I can't get there before the prices change. So long, <laughs> Oh, come on, Costello. Let's try another house. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Costello. Could I have your autograph? Now, wait a minute, kid. I've given you my autograph three times. What are you doing with my autograph? Well, if I get three more of yours, I can trade it for one of Trigger's footprints. Oh, yeah? Uh, Ouch! Costello, what did you do? I just gave him one of my footprints. <laughs> oh, forget him. Come on. Oh, I'm back with a little beaver now. Never mind that. Let's, let's try this door over here. Come on. Oh, hello, Mr. Rabbit. Oh, you dear man. Don't tell me you're selling washing machines. Oh, pardon me, that tub is Costello. <laughs> you better close that door quick, Mrs. Niles. You're liable to get arrested for indecent exposure. Indecent exposure? Yes, ma'am. You're out here in broad daylight with your face showing. <laughs> I heard that remark, Costello. What do you mean by insulting my wife that way? Because I don't know any other way. <laughs> tell me, Ken, was Mrs. Niles just as homely the day you proposed to her? Well, I don't know. She was catching for the Brooklyn Dodgers and had her mask on. 
<laughs> One more remark like that, and I'll cut the string on your yo-yo. I, uh... <laughs> please, please, folks, please, let's stop arguing. Costello, uh, Costello came here to ask you if you'd like to see him on the screen as Napoleon. I'd rather see him with Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon is dead. You catch on fast, fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, you certainly told Costello off that time. Oh, you're so wonderful. You fill the breeze with a heavenly perfume. Oh, no, dear. You're the one that fills the breeze with heavenly perfume. Oh, no, dear. I insist you fill the breeze with heavenly perfume. Oh, no, dear. I insist you fill the breeze with heavenly perfume. <laughs> Run for cover, folks. We caught a couple of skunks in our traps. <laughs> Tonight, we salute the memory of a great man, a great doctor. His name, Dr. John Hunter. And he has been called the founder of modern surgery. And a salute to the surgeons who followed him, who developed skills and techniques almost beyond belief. The makers of camels take a pardonable pride in the standing of this brand among the physicians and surgeons of America. In a survey of 113,000 doctors conducted by three leading independent research organizations, this query was advanced. What cigarette do you smoke, Doctor? The brand most named was Camels. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. By popular request, Camels' lovely Amy Arnell sings... Give me a little kiss, will ya, huh? What are you gonna miss? Will you hug? Gosh, oh gee, why do you refuse? I can't see what you got to lose. Oh, give me a little squeeze. Will you hug? Why do you want to make me blue? I wouldn't say a word if I were asking for the world. What's a little kiss between a fella and his girl? Give me a little kiss, will ya, huh? And I'll give it right back to you. Please be nice. Once or twice, once again, a plea I'm gonna make. Tell me when do I get a break? Hold me tight, anything you ask I'll do. I'll take you for a little ride where we can be alone. And once you kiss me, you will never think of walking home. Give me a little kiss. Will ya, huh? And I'll give it right back to you. Well, Costello, you'll never convince Universal Studios that you can play the part of Napoleon. Yes, I will. No, you won't. Ladies and gentlemen of our studio audience, I'm about to put on a play in which I will star in the role of Napoleon. No, no, not that. We're not going to sit through that. Oh, what a lousy actor. Open the doors, Lydia. Hey, Costello, look. Look, it's Millenhead down there in the audience. Now, just a minute, Millenhead. I dare you to come up here on the stage. All right, I'll come up there on the stage. Yeah, well, come on up here. All right, wise guy. Now I'm up on the stage. Well, now that you're up here on the stage, I dare you to come over here and put your hand on my shoulder. All right, I'll put my hand on your shoulder. There, now I've got my hand on your shoulder. Now what? Let's dance. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> Let's look. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Melon Head is right about your acting, Costello, and he knows. He's a producer at Universal. Producer, Abbott? I'll have you know that I was head producer. And look at that head. You produced. Ah! <laughs> there we go. There we go. There you go with those insulting remarks again, Costello. You, you get in my hair. Okay, but I'll have to wear my sneakers. It looks awful slippery up there. Costello, now... Maybe if you talk nice to Melonhead, he'd direct your play for you. 
Melonhead, could you make another child's boyer out of me? Costello, I could not only make a child's boyer out of you, but I'd have enough fat left over to make a case of life boyer. <laughs> All right, now to the play. Costello, you will play Napoleon. Abbott here will be your friend Talleyrand, and Mrs. Niles here, she'll play your wife, Josephine. Ah, oh, why does Mr. Niles always have to play my wife? Why can't I have a young girl like Ingrid Bergman? Costello, I've got everything that Ingrid Bergman has. Yeah, but why did you let yours get so shabby? <laughs> Enough of this. Enough of this, Costello. Let's get on with the play. Mr. Niles, will you please set the scene? Ladies and gentlemen, we present a stirring French drama entitled How Napoleon Lost the Battle of Waterloo or Costello Gets Caught with His France Down. <laughs> As our scene opens, we find Napoleon sitting in the throne room, waiting for his wife, Josephine, to enter. Good morning, Your Majesty. Ah, oh, come in, Josephine. Bone jour. My bone, Josephine. Pull up a bone chair and have a box of bone bones. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Costello. Why do you put bone in front of everything? Because, says Napoleon, I want to give the bone a pot. Well! Could you please put down Napoleon? And why do you always stand with your hand stuck inside your coat? That's where I hide my butter. <laughs> Napoleon, I have come to you for some money. I'm sorry, Josephine, but the royal coffers are in bad shape. The royal coffers are in bad shape? Yes, listen. <coughs> <laughs> that's enough, that's enough. Awkward. Don't overdo it. <coughs> That last course caught us uh, $35 more. Napoleon, I tell you, I need money. You've given away all my jewels to Madame Dewberry. Yesterday, you gave her my diamond tiara. What do you care about your tiara? You still have your boom, D.A. Ah. <laughs> but, Josephine, here is something to replace the tiara. It's a gift from America. It's called tobacco. And it was discovered in Shemokin, Pennsylvania. Shemokin, Shemokin Pennsylvania? Yes, it's called Shemokin Tobacco. <laughs> oh, I'm having trouble with my subjects. I can't do a thing with my subjects. Who are you, the king? No, just a high school student. <laughs> <laughs> Your Majesty, Talleyrand has just come in. Good. I had two bucks on his nose. No. I mean, I mean... No, no, Costello. Look, Talleyrand isn't a horse. It's Abbott. Oh, a jackass. Yeah. All right, Costello. <laughs> Stick to the play. <clears throat> uh, Your Majesty, I bring great tidings from the battlefield. Rome is about to fall. Let us drink a toast. Napoleon, you have been drinking too much lately. Drink uh, water. Uh, okay, water it is. Here's to victory. <laughs> What was that? Rome just fell. Oh, we must have a grand ball to celebrate our victory. Napoleon, you must wear the new powdered wig I bought you. I refuse to wear it again. Well, it's made out of hair from your horse's tail. No wonder it keeps swatting flies and knocking my hat off. <laughs> Madame Josephine, Madame Josephine, I have come to fix your hair. Wait a minute, who are you? Monsieur, I am a lady in waiting. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Kiss your poor old father. <laughs> Costello, stick to your lines. I'd much rather stick to hers. <laughs> Get your hands off that girl or I'll have her sent to the guillotine. Yes, Your Majesty. You wouldn't want me if I lost my head. I don't know. There'll still be enough left to have a date with. <laughs> Talleyrand has just come in. Must have been scratched in the last race. <laughs> Talk sense, Costello. Uh, I bring you bad news from Russia. You know, you must go to your troops at once. But remember, it's freezing cold in Russia. I will fix you a lunch. Would you like a nice hot dish? Yes. Yvonne, come here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> Costello, do you realize that Universal Studios is listening to this play? I refuse to direct this play any longer unless everybody takes orders from me. Okay, Melonhead, you give the order. Thanks, Costello. Yvonne... Come here and kiss your poor old director. Get out, get out. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on, break Costello this up. Costello is my only director. Yeah, Emma. Huh? Can you break this up, please? Now, let's get back to the play. Come on, Napoleon. Let us drink a toast to our coming victory in Russia. Ah, uh -uh, Napoleon, you must drink water, remember? Oh, darn it. I'll be glad when they exile me to that island. Then I can bend my elbow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come, Napoleon, kiss Josephine goodbye. We must join your troops. Goodbye, fair Josephine. <laughs> Josephine, your nose is wet. You kissed your horse. I'm over here. <laughs> now, come over here and kiss me. I should have quit when I was even. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Hey, Talleyrand, what is this village? Your Majesty, this is the village of Waterloo. Your troops are taking a terrible beating. Just listen. you poor man. I am Napoleon. Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, get a larger cast. I'm sick and tired of the whole thing. (laughs) Napoleon! I've come to ask your surrender. I am Wellington. You have been defeated. Very well, Wellington. Let us drink a toast to your victory. Remember, Napoleon, you can't drink liquor. But I'm not really Napoleon. I'm Lou Costello. Well, in that case, here's your water, Lou. Waterloo. <laughs> Waterloo, get it? That's a joke, folks. That's a joke. Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men in the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight, we hail the 101st Screaming Eagle Airborne Division, heroes of the Normandy invasion and holders of the Distinguished Unit Citation for their heroic resistance to Rundstedt's winter offensive at Bastogne. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now, with demobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Bedford, Massachusetts, U.S. Army Moore General Hospital, Swannanoa, North Carolina, U.S. Naval Hospital, Farragut, Idaho, U.S. Marine Hospital, Cleveland, Ohio, and Veterans Hospital, Amarillo, Texas, in your honor, men of the Screaming Eagle Division. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week. Are rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud and Lou with a final word. Well, Napoleon... What have you got to say? Here I am, the great Napoleon, exiled to the island of Elba. All my friends have deserted me. Here I am all alone. Nobody loves me. I love you. Who was that? Look up here in this tree. Oh, an old monkey. Yes. Come here, Costello. What do you want? Come here and kiss your poor old father. Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-Zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S Choice tobacco, crimp cut to burn cool, and especially treated for the removal of tongue bite. Those three things made Prince Albert the national joy smoke. Smoked in more pipes than any other tobacco on earth. Try P.A. today. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. You'll hear Red Foley, Grand Ole Opry's sensational new singer. He's got a voice that's romantic as moonlight on the mountains, warm as southern hospitality. Remember Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night on NBC, with the Duke of Paducah, Minnie Pearl, and Red Foley. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for another Abbott and Costello show for Camel Cigarettes. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay around now for Rudy Valley for most of these stations. This is Ken Niles in Hollywood wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camels. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.